Hi folks, I'm Dan from HKN and we're going to be solving this um, complex circuit. It's just a simple node voltage problem when you get down to it. Uh, and we're going to be solving it for the power across this 35 milliamp uh, current source. Uh, now first, it looks very uh, complicated, lots of resistors. Uh, you kind of suffer from the, where do I begin, what do I do? Um, but to find the power across this, we already know the current, so all we really need is the voltage. So we need the voltage across this node, and just for a reminder, I'll circle that it is that. Uh, that's what we're solving for the power. Um, so the first thing, uh, with all these resistors, we're going to try to want to simplify it a bit. You see here, with the 5K ohm and the 6K ohm, they're in series, so they're connected by the same kind of bus line, and what's important is they share the same voltage. And you can see here, same thing with the 1K ohm and the 8K ohm down there. So what we can do is just with simple uh, resistors in series, you just add up the resistances. So I'll redraw it here. So 1 plus 8, 9, nice and simple. All right, and so now already you could see that uh, the circuit's been simplified quite a bit, and it's even with that one quick step, much more uh, readable, doable. Uh, so the next thing we're going to want to do is to find any resistors that are in parallel. So we see right here is this 7K ohm and this 4K ohm. Now, what I usually like to do when solving these for myself, I would draw this 7K ohm as instead of the squiggles being on top, I would draw the squiggles on the side. So I physically see the two resistors are in fact in parallel. They're sharing the same, uh, the same buses. So with this 7K and this 4K, we're just going to do A times B over A plus B. So 7 times 4, so 28 over 11, is 2.5, or yes, 2.5 K ohms. And actually here, we see a 3 K ohm and a 9 K ohm are also in parallel. Now, whoever wrote this problem, it's the same thing here. What I would do myself is I would redraw this 3 K ohm to be over on here. And it's the same. It's... Uh, Mathematically the same thing. I would just redraw it, bring it over here, like dot, 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 squiggle, squiggle, as 3K ohm. Um, and this way I see they're right next to each other and they are, same thing, actually in parallel. So that also makes uh, just understanding it a little bit easier uh, for me personally. So 9 times 3 over 12, we get 27 over 12 which gives us uh, 2.25 kilo ohms. So I'm going to redraw it with this replaced by this single resistance, these two, well, really these two, replaced by a single resistance. And you'll see the circuit gets even more understandable. All right, and um, from here, what we're going to do next is, yet again, we see two resistors in series. Now, you can redraw these that the resistors are both, say, on the left side here of the voltage source or on the right side here. It really doesn't matter. They're the, it's the same thing. Um, I like to draw it to, the, to, uh, to be on top of the voltage source personally, but... Uh, it's really personal preference. It doesn't, it's not important. And 
And so, same as before, 11 plus 2.5 just gives us simple 13.5 k ohms. And here we'll have the same thing, 2.25 k ohms. And here we have 35 milliamps. Uh, so now that we've simplified these, we're actually going to finally be able to start doing our nodal analysis. So first thing we're going to want to do is pick a node for ground. You usually want to do this um, where it's the most complicated node, where most of the things interconnect, uh, to be set as your zero volts. It just makes your life easier. In this case, this node right here, everything connects to this guy. So that's going to be our ground. And this means we really only have one node to solve for, and it's here. I'm going to label it V um, because there's only one, so there's no need for V1. Uh, so now we're going to start with our um, actual node voltage. Now, this uses Kirchhoff's current law, which is that every, every current entering a node must also leave it. So as we remember from Ohm's law, voltage over resistance gives us our current. So V over 2.25K ohms for the current here, plus V minus 2 over 13.5 K ohms. Now the reason it's minus 2, the way I like to visualize it, it's you see the positive terminal of this voltage source is closer to our node V. Um, and so you kind of flip the sign because you see that the current's entering it, all the current's entering this node are going to be negative. All the currents leaving are going to be positive. So we're going to do V minus 2 over 13.5. And with the same logic here of currents entering are negative, you see that this current from the 35 milliamp source is entering. It's negative. So minus 35 milliamps. And this all equals big fat zero. So now we have it's just an equation in terms of one variable. So I'll bring the 35 milliamps over to the other side. Equals V over 2.25 K ohms plus V minus 2 over 13.5 K ohms. Now from here on on, from here on out, it's just simple algebra. So I'm going to multiply, multiply, so it'll be 13.5V plus 2.25V minus 4.5 all over 2.25 times 13.5. So from here, we're just going to multiply both sides by 2.25 times 13.5. We're going to add 4.5 and, and then uh, divide. So this is just algebra from here on. So we'll have, I'll draw it this way. Sorry about this, folks. And so this will give us a very large number. Let me punch it into my calculator right now. All right. Yeah, so this gives us a very big, ugly number. But that is all right by us. And just for simplicity's sake, 13.5 plus 2.25 gives us 15.75 V minus 4.5. Add 4.5 to both sides. So 
subtract by 15.75. Oops, did a little math error. Apologies. So do our division now, and it gives us 67.7 volts. Now we're not done yet. This is our voltage, but we're trying to solve for power. So it's just one last step we need to do. Uh, I'm just going to erase to give myself some room here. So while well, I'm erasing, I guess I'll explain. Uh, we see here that it's this voltage that's 65, 67 volts. However, we have to take care of passive sign convention. And I'll explain that once I actually have some room. All right, looks good. So. So with this 35 milliamps, we see that uh, current's going to be entering the negative. Um, and that's not passive sign convention. Passive sign convention would have it entering the positive. So all we need to do, nice and simple, is flip the sign. So instead of multiplying 35 milliamps times 67.7 volts, not going to do that. Instead, 35 milliamps times negative 67.7 volts. Uh, that's really all there is to it. It's just you flip the sign if you see that the current is entering into the, uh, into the wrong node. So I'm just going to do the math right now. And we have ourselves negative 2.0. Three, seven watts. And so in summary, what we did here is we combined resistors in series here and here, then combined resistors in parallel. Uh, one final series combination here. And then we got to our node voltage equation here which we simplified for 67.7 volts. At the very end, we had to flip the 67.7 volts because current was entering into the negative instead of into the positive, uh, multiplied by current. Um, as we know, power equals current times voltage. And that's all there is to it. So we have negative 2.37 watts in this, um, in this current source. And does that make sense logically? Because negative is, is associated with uh, delivering power, positive is associated with absorbing power. So yes, that makes sense because this, this is a current source. It's delivering current as opposed to if it was across a resistor, it would be absorbing current, it would be absorbing power. Um, so that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned something and uh, good luck in circuits.